So if you're studying for your CCNA or CCNP or CCIE, do you actually need a lab? Great question. Short answer, absolutely. However, it could be an overwhelming decision because of the number of choices that are available to you, especially when it comes to building a physical lab at home or at work. Hey guys, Naj Kazi here. In today's video, I'm gonna give you the breakdown of building a physical lab versus all the different virtual and rental options that are available to you so you could make the best choice for your studying. I'm super duper excited. With that, let's roll. Here are the topics I plan on covering today. First, physical lab. Second, rack rental. Third, virtual lab. Let's go. Physical lab. So most of the people opt in when they're studying for their CCNA, CCNP, or CCIE to go with the physical lab. That's the best way to get started. And let me tell you how much it costs to build a home lab. A couple of things you need to think about. You need to buy a couple of routers. Cisco 2811 is my preferred. Doesn't have to be. You can go with 1800 series or 3800 series or whatever your heart desires. But to me, this gives you the most bang for your buck. Switches, Catalyst 3560, my favorite switches. They also do layer three. You don't have to get these. You can also get 3700s or any other type of switch if you want, but that's the best way to get started. Terminal server. To keep things consistent, you might want to get a Cisco 2811. Otherwise, you can also get away with the older 2600 series terminal server. Remote power PDU. This is a power strip that has eight to 10 ports typically, and you can access it over the internet through a browser. And in that browser, you can select that you want to turn on router one or router two. And basically all the power cables that are plugged into this power strip, um, you have the ability to turn them on or off individually through a, through a web page, which is pretty cool. But this is an optional component. Network rack, you're gonna definitely need a network rack to house that many gear, and I'll tell you how many you need. You're gonna at least need a 16 RU or rack unit. And then finally, you're gonna need a bunch of cables. You're gonna need a bunch of Ethernet Cat 5E cables. They're really cheap. Make sure you're, you do yourself a huge favor and get certified CAT 5E cables. Do not attempt to make your own cables. It might save you a few pennies, but not worth it because you're gonna run into some weird bugs in your lab and you're gonna probably end up spending ridiculous amount of time troubleshooting instead of actually studying. Not recommended, so you should buy certified cables. You could buy them on eBay or you can just Google them and there's plenty of different suppliers to sell them. They're really cheap, maybe buck a cable maybe even cheaper if you buy them in bulk. And then also you're gonna need an async cable to plug into the terminal server. And let me quickly show you what the heck async cable actually is. So it's called Cisco Serial RS-232 cable. The circle is showing you the serial portion of it. It's the portion that plugs into an HWIC card on the router and then all the RJ45 connections on the right hand side plug into the console ports on your routers and switches. So what ends up happening is you log into the terminal server when you're doing your lab either at home or your remote. You log into your terminal server first and then the terminal server has reverse telnet connection through these cables that you're looking at into the console port of your devices and this is an out of band management for accessing your entire rack full of hardware for your lab. Now let's do the math. So if you get 12 routers, the 2811s, uh, 75 bucks a piece, you're gonna need 12 of them. That's about 900 bucks for switches, about 300 bucks terminal server with async card, roughly about 120. You're gonna need two remote PDUs. They're gonna cost you, but they're optional. Uh, so it's up to you if you want that convenience or not. It's for about 400 bucks. Network rack, you're gonna need at least a minimum of 16 U. It's probably gonna run you around 200, maybe even cheaper. Uh, but I just wanted to go with the highest possible number. Cat 5E and async cables, everything combined. 
Altogether, looking at about two grand, this may or may not be a lot of money to you, but here it is. Let's talk about a couple of pros and cons of having a home lab. Pros, you get hands-on experience. It's very real world. You can simulate your customer's environment at home. If you have never touched network hardware before, this is an amazing opportunity for you to learn the ins and outs of hardware. And there's something about touching the physical gear that actually is an amazing confidence booster. And on top of it, it does something to your head. It actually turns on that light bulb that makes you a network engineer. So I highly recommend if you can afford to do so, to actually buy your own gear, either at home or at work. And I'll, I'm about to give you a tip on how to do that at work if you didn't want to do it at home. And some of the negatives of having a home lab, it's expensive, not ridiculously expensive, but it is expensive. But just to put things in perspective though, when I built my lab for my CCIE studies over a decade ago, I spent north of $15,000 in building a lab compared to $2,000. And this $2,000 lab is actually better than the lab that I had built, just to put things in perspective. So things have come a long way and it's a lot cheaper now to actually build a lab, but still you're spending money. Network gear tend to generate a lot of noise. This is something you gotta think about. And they suck up a lot of power, which means your power bill is definitely going up. You're gonna need a dedicated space for the network rack and all the hardware. Don't recommend using your home office for this purpose, especially if you're gonna be on conference calls and stuff. It's not gonna work, Plus, it's gonna drive you crazy. So make sure you find a separate dedicated space. And one thing that I had experienced and it really frustrated the living heck out of me is the bugs that I would run into related to hardware. Like could be as stupid as like a Cat 5e not operating properly or like back then there were a lot of serial connections, maybe something broke, the cable was bad or maybe an interface went bad or something. And then the next thing you know is you're spending hours and days and weeks trying to troubleshoot something that actually is not even configuration related. It's related to like a bad piece of hardware. And remember guys, when you buy this stuff, this is all used stuff. You're not buying new. So of course there's gonna be issues, right? Because you're buying used gear. So just keep that in mind. Now, a couple of tips. If you wanna build a work lab instead of having a home lab, make sure you get your employer buy-in. Talk to your boss about sponsoring a lab for the entire engineering team. Instead of just you, get, you know, talk to your team members, get them all excited, then go talk to your boss and see if your boss buys into that idea. And maybe if possible, have your employer fund the lab. And as a matter of fact, depending on who you're working for, if you happen to be working with a Cisco partner, most likely you already have a lab. You just need to find out how to gain access to it or they'll be more than happy to set one up for you. Second tip, and that's the key one, is make the lab and your education part of your career development plan at work. So make sure you work with your boss on your career development, you know, your next six, 12, 18 month goal, sit down with your boss, talk about how you can accomplish your certification, CCNA, CCNP, CCIE and whatnot and why it's important to have access to all this hardware to be able to accomplish your goals. Now let's talk through Rack Rentals. There's a number of different sites you can rent racks from, but I personally like INE, which is the Internetwork Expert. They are amazing. Slightly expensive though, they'll sell you 100 tokens for about 100 bucks, so that's $1 per token. And what you need, according to their website, is about 350 to 450 hours of total rack time, about two to 300 hours for CCNP, and about 100 to 150 for CCNA. And your CCNA, CCNP route and switch requires three tokens per hour. So if you were to do the math, for CCNA, 100 hours times three tokens per hour, and assuming a cost of $1 per token, you're looking at spending about $300. Also, 
if you, the more tokens you buy, the, the bigger the discount you get. So you might be able to save a couple of bucks here. It's not that expensive, honestly, if you think about it, compared to the benefit you get, you don't have to mess around with power or any of the physical stuff. Everything is cabled up for you and it's all professionally done. And most likely there won't be any bugs because they do a lot of testing to make sure that there aren't any bugs for their students. And then the third option, which is my personal favorite, is the virtual lab. And there are three options within the virtual lab to begin with. Option number one is Packet Tracer. First off, it's free. I love it. What you need to do is go to this URL and I'll provide the URL in the video description below. So make sure you, you check that out. And all you have to do is it's free. You simply need to enroll into Introduction to Packet Tracer course to download the latest version of Packet Tracer. So it used to be that you have to become a paid member of the Networking Academy, Cisco Networking Academy, you no longer have to do that. You just go and sign up for this for free and you will be able to download the Packet Tracer. The next software is my personal favorite and it's GNS3. You can download it from gns3.com. You can build complex topologies in minutes. You can emulate routers, but you cannot do switches though. So that's a big negative that I personally do not like about GNS3 is you can't do switches and you will probably run into some bugs because it's a virtual environment. What I would suggest, a pro tip, would be to use it for layer three routing only labs. So if you need to like quickly get something spun up with a couple of routers and you're trying to see how things are gonna operate or you're trying to do a quick EIGRP or OSPF or BGP lab, feel free to just you know, fire up GNS3 and do that. However, one thing for, I want you to keep in mind is you're gonna need to find iOS images. So that's the gray area about GNS3. You're gonna need to find iOS images. For that, you are on your own. Uh, you're gonna have to Google it and get creative in terms of getting access to iOS images. Because of this gray area, I don't like to mess with GNS3 much. I just like the packet tracer. But one thing about Packet Tracer though, is it's very, very limited in terms of the commands you run because it's a simulation, it's not an emulation. So something to keep in mind. Cisco Modeling Labs, it used to be called Viral. Now they renamed it to Cisco Modeling Labs. That's another favorite of mine. It costs some money though. So $199 a year, that comes down to about $17 a month. That's not too bad. A couple of cups of Starbucks coffee. So really, you know, uh, just give up maybe three cups of coffee and there you go, a month. It's available as a VM. So either as an OVA, so you can run it on VMware or ISO, but you run it as a VM. Uh, you can build complex topologies in minutes. You can run both routers and switches. If you can afford it, this is my personal favorite virtual lab option. And final pro tip guys, once again, as I mentioned earlier, check with your employer to see if they would pay for it. So. If you can't get your employer to buy into the concept of setting up a lab at work, that's the least they can do. Just pay $200 for you so you can go ahead and get access to Cisco Modeling Labs and once again, make that part of your career development plan. And there you have it. That wraps up today's video. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.